The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, has three bullet points in its mission statement. One, to understand and predict changes in climate, weather, ocean, and coasts. Two, to share that knowledge and information with others. And three, to conserve and manage coastal and marine ecosystems and resources. As such, NOAA is the go-to governmental organization in the United States for information about weather, climate, the global ocean, and coastlines. That's a lot of responsibility for a single organization. On January 28, 2024, NOAA published the final update to its $2023 billion disaster report, which confirmed a historic year in the number and magnitude of expensive disasters throughout the U.S., There were 28 weather and climate disasters in 2023, significantly exceeding the previous record of 22 such events in 2020. The cost is at least $92.9 billion. These events affected states from Florida to Maine, which includes the entire eastern coastline of the U.S. As you can see in this chart from NOAA's $2023 billion disaster report, 2023 was truly, truly historic with respect to billion-dollar events. The red line represents 2023, which clearly exceeded other years. In a section titled Notable U.S. Billion-Dollar Disasters of 2023, this year's report includes three disasters. One, the southern-slash-midwestern drought and heat wave, which was characterized by 247 human deaths and $14.5 billion in costs. Two, central tornado outbreak and eastern severe weather in early March 31st to April 1st, which accounted for 33 human deaths and $5.7 billion in costs. And three, Hawaii firestorm August 8th, which caused 100 human deaths and cost $5.6 $5.6 billion. Next year's report will include the human lives lost and the monetary cost of Hurricanes Milton and Helene on the eastern coast of the United States. About 300 humans died as a result of Hurricanes Milton and Helene, and the estimated financial cost is likely to exceed $100 billion. As a result, it appears NOAA will be reporting another record year with next year's report. It is no surprise that climate-driven weather events are setting records almost every year. After all, as the Designed to Fail Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported more than five years ago with two reports, Earth is amid abrupt, irreversible climate change. As a result of the collective actions of too many humans on a finite planet, we are beginning to see adverse consequences. Hurricanes driven by an overheated planet are hardly the only negative outcome documented so far. According to a peer-reviewed open-access paper in Nature, published on August 7, 2024, ocean temperatures in the vicinity of the Great Barrier Reef, quote, were the warmest in 400 years, end quote. The abstract also indicates that the January to March Coral Sea extremes were warmest in 2024, 2017, 2020, 2016, 2004, and 2022 in descending order from warmest to coolest. In other words, the last 20 years include the six warmest years on record, and the last 10 years includes the four warmest years on record. This is not good news for those of us who appreciate life on the only planet known Mm -hmm. with certainty to currently include life. The abstract of this renowned peer-reviewed paper closes with two terrifying sentences. Quote, Without urgent action, the iconic Great Barrier Reef is at risk of experiencing temperatures conducive to near-annual coral bleaching, with negative consequences for biodiversity and ecosystem services. A continuation on the current trajectory would further threaten the ecological function and outstanding universal value of one of Earth's great natural wonders. End quote. It is unstated and unclear what, quote, urgent action, end quote, will stop threatening, quote, the ecological function and outstanding universal value of one of Earth's great natural wonders, end quote. After all, as the IPCC reported more than five years ago with two reports, Earth is amid abrupt, irreversible climate change. Continuing on the current path is a prescription for planetary disaster leading to the extinction of all life on Earth. However, as I point out now and then in this space, Reducing industrial activity invokes the loss of aerosol masking, which will drive all life to extinction even faster than the current path. 
The continued virtual absence of the slightest mention of aerosol masking from corporate media outlets, government officials, and paid climate scientists will continue to prevent most people from understanding this important concept. As a result, it will continue to promote a misguided path leading to a so-called solution, reducing industrial activity, sometimes called degrowth, by people who like to invent new words when existing vocabulary works perfectly well, is no solution to the predicament in which we find ourselves. Regardless, we have been taught, essentially from birth, that humans can solve any problem. What if we can't solve every problem? What if the so-called problem is actually a thorny predicament that includes no viable solution? What if all current members of Homo sapiens are only as clever as the final members of the previous eight species? Well, at least eight species, in the genus Homo that went extinct. In invoking these final members of the previous species in the genus Homo, I am indicating that at least eight species in the genus Homo have already gone extinct. We think of ourselves as special, but evidence that indicates we are cleverer than the eight species that foretold our own extinction is lacking. If such evidence is available to you, please send it my way. Perhaps there is a way out of this mess, and it is not apparent to me. Perhaps paid climate scientists are withholding information only to heroically save our species as the clock ticks down. Collective human activity has acidified the ocean to the extent that some species of fish avoid coral reefs. This finding was reported in the peer-reviewed Journal of Animal Ecology on June 26, 2024. Written by nine scholars, the abstract of this paper begins with this statement, quote, Climate change stressors are progressively simplifying biogenic habitats in the terrestrial and marine realms and consequently altering the structure of associated species communities, end quote. Even the Washington Post occasionally publishes a relevant article. Consider the October 9, 2024 article titled, Earth's wildlife populations have disappeared at a catastrophic rate in the past half century, new analysis says. The article focuses on vertebrates. Here's the lead. Quote, Earth's wildlife populations have fallen on average by a catastrophic rate of 73% in the past half century, according to a new analysis the World Wildlife Fund released today. End quote. The article in the Post quotes the chief scientist at World Wildlife Fund. Quote, it really does ind- indicate to us that the fabric of nature is unraveling. Vertebrate populations underpin ecosystem health, and the services we get from ecosystems like stable climate, abundant and clean water, healthy soils to grow food, productive fisheries that supply people with protein. End quote. The worst de- declines during the 50 years studied were in Latin America and the Caribbean. However, this is primarily due to the fact that locations characterized by early Caucasian settlement, quote, had already wiped out nature on a wide scale by 1970, end quote, when this study began. It's unfair to compare contemporary disasters while including regions where disasters have already wreaked havoc on life. A professor of wildlife ecology and conservation in Australia who was not involved in the generation of this week's report is quoted in the article in the Washington Post. Working in conservation involves, quote, experiencing trauma on a daily basis, end quote. He compared this trauma to an art lover's reaction if three quarters of the contents of the Louvre disappeared. Quote, this is what's happening to our nature. We're watching it be destroyed before our very eyes, end quote. This is what happens during a mass extinction event. The biggest difference between the current mass extinction event and previous ones is the magnitude of this one our collective action will almost certainly cause the extinction of all life on Earth. Just as there, there is no recovery from terminal cancer, there is no recovery from a devastated living planet. Although all life ends in death, we are hastening the process at an unprecedented rate. It's clearly time to implement planetary hospice.